Big cities, shiny buildings, look closer. Many apartments sit empty, yet rent keeps rising. What's the deal? It's the housing paradox. We're told supply and demand rule. More supply should mean lower prices, right? Not so fast. This isn't your Econ 101 textbook. This is reality and something's broken. Walk through any major city. Construction cranes dot the skyline. New condo buildings rise like expensive weeds. Each one promises luxury living rooftop pools, gyms, even dog spas. But who are these places for? The answer is complicated. The problem isn't just the number of units, it's who can afford them. Many new buildings are aimed at the wealthy, not everyday people. Investors scoop up units, leaving them empty. They're betting on rising prices, not housing people. It's a casino, not a community. Let's talk about this rental boom. Cities brag about all the new units built. They use fancy charts and graphs. Look at all this housing, they say. Problem solved. But hold on a minute. Are these units affordable or are they luxury condos starting at $4,000 a month? This isn't just about numbers on a spreadsheet. It's about real people, teachers, nurses, firefighters, the backbone of our cities. They can't afford these prices. They're being priced out of their own communities. And that hurts everyone. This boom benefits a select few developers, investors, and maybe your friend who got lucky flipping condos. Meanwhile, regular folks are left scrambling. They're forced into cramped apartments, long commutes, or worse, homelessness. This isn't a housing boom, it's a housing bust for the majority. Here's a news flash building more luxury condos won't solve the housing crisis. It's like putting a band-aid on a broken leg. We need to address the root problem affordability. People need homes they can actually afford, not empty investment properties. Governments love to talk about housing starts and building permits. They throw around numbers like confetti, but they often miss the bigger picture. It's not just about quantity, it's about quality and affordability. A city can have thousands of new units, but if they're all out of reach for most people, what's the point? We need to shift the focus from simply building more units to building the right kind of units. Units that are affordable for working families, seniors and students. Units that are close to jobs, transit and amenities. We need to build communities, not just concrete boxes. Section 4. Data delusions. How stats hide the real housing crisis. Governments love their data. Charts, graphs, percentages, they're obsessed. But sometimes the numbers don't tell the whole story. They can even be misleading. Take vacancy rates, for example. A low rate might look good on paper, but it doesn't tell you about the hidden vacancies, those empty luxury condos bought by investors. Then there's the average rent. This number gets skewed by those same luxury units. It makes it seem like rent is more affordable than it really is for most people. These averages mask the real struggles of everyday renters. It's like measuring the average temperature of a hospital. You'll miss the patients with fevers. We need to look beyond the surface of the data. We need to dig deeper and understand the stories behind the numbers. We need data that reflects the lived experiences of real people, not just the profits of developers. Only then can we start to address the true scale of the affordability crisis. Section 5. The Condo Kings, How Real Estate Developers Game the System. Let's talk about the big guys, the real estate developers. They're in the business of making money and they're good at it. They know how to work the system, lobby for favorable policies and maximize their profits. And often those profits come at the expense of affordable housing. They donate to political campaigns, throw lavish parties and whisper sweet nothings into the ears of politicians. And what do they get in return? Zoning changes, tax breaks and fast-tracked approvals for their luxury condo projects? It's a cosy relationship, but it's not good for the rest of us. We need to shine a light on this cosy relationship and demand better. We need to close loopholes that benefit developers and enact policies that prioritize people over profits. We need to make it clear that housing is a human right, not a commodity to be traded for profit. Section six, building a better future, policy solutions for affordable housing. Okay, enough doom and gloom. Let's talk solutions. We need bold action to tackle the affordability crisis. First up, inclusionary zoning. This means requiring developers to include affordable units in new buildings. No more luxury towers for the privileged few. Next, let's invest in social housing. This means building and maintaining housing that is truly affordable for low and middle income earners. We need to stop treating housing like a luxury. 
and start treating it like the essential human need that it is. And let's not forget about tenant protections. We need stronger laws to prevent unfair evictions, exorbitant rent increases and unsafe living conditions. Renters deserve respect and security, not the constant threat of displacement. It's time for housing justice. Section 7, time to act, no more excuses on housing. The housing crisis is a complex problem, but the solution isn't rocket science. It requires political will, bold action, and a commitment to putting people before profits. We need to stop accepting the status quo and demand better for ourselves and future generations. This isn't a partisan issue. It's a human issue. It's about ensuring that everyone has a safe, affordable place to call home. It's about creating communities that are vibrant, diverse and inclusive. It's about building a better future for all. So let's get to work. Let's contact our elected officials, organize in our communities and demand change. The time for excuses is over. The time for action is now. Let's build a future where everyone has a place to call home.